Hey guys, welcome back to our Dead Church series. In the last video, we talked about the first of two objections that many Christians will bring up when we talk about faith, repentance, obedience, and how all of this works together. That first objection is legalism. In that video, we basically said that legalism isn't found anywhere in the Bible. It's not something that scripture ever warns us about. But scripture does tell us a lot that we need to be obeying the commands of God. And that if we're not obeying the commands of God, we don't know him and we're not saved. That's what scripture teaches. And I read a number of verses from just the book of 1 John alone that tell us that. If you want to watch that video, you can click to it right here. Now in this video, we want to address the second objection. And it's often a response to when we look at verses like those that tell us we need to be obeying God. That second objection is... Christians will hear this whole message and they will say, well, that makes me feel condemned. That makes me have condemnation. Now, what do Christians mean when they say this? Generally, what they mean is that makes me feel guilty. That makes me feel bad and guilty because I look at my life and I see that I'm not obeying and I see times that I fail to obey and then I feel condemned and that leaves me feeling condemned and I need to just remember that I'm forgiven. I need to remember that I have forgiveness. This is something that is really holding a lot of Christians back. And so what I'm gonna say in this video is going to sound a little bit harsh, but I ask that you just listen and look at scripture because I really believe this is what scripture teaches. And I think it's really important for your salvation and for anyone's salvation. So what does the Bible say about condemnation? Well, one of the first verses we can look at is in the book of 1 John. 1 John is very essential to understanding what true Christianity is because he wrote his book to address false Christianity that was cropping up. He was addressing these people who were teaching lies and teaching a false Christianity. And so he really kind of lays down the hammer and says like, this is what is real and this is what is not. This is what a real Christian looks like. And this is what a false Christian looks like. And one of the things he talks about there is condemnation. So this is what John says in 1 John chapter three. By this, we will know that we belong to the truth. And if our hearts condemn us, our hearts can be reassured before him. God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. This is a verse that a lot of Christians will look at and they will say, okay, well, when my heart condemns me, I need to remember that I have peace with God. God's greater than my heart and he knows everything. I actually heard a sermon once and it really stuck with me years ago, over a decade ago. I heard this sermon where this man was preaching from this verse saying, when it says God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything, that could be something that makes us feel condemned because we think of all the sin in our lives. But really what that means is that God remembers the gospel. He remembers everything. He remembers that you are saved by Jesus. And so that is what you need to remember when your heart condemns you. You have peace with God because God remembers everything, not just your sin. And I remember hearing that it was over 10 years ago and it really encouraged me because I was at a time in my life where I felt condemned all the time. I looked at my life and I knew I wasn't doing things that the Bible said to do and I felt guilty about it. And I was always just trying to remember, I have peace with God. I have peace with God. God remembers the gospel even when I don't. He remembers forgiveness even when I don't. Guys, that is false teaching. That is not what John is saying here. That verse is being taken totally out of context to fit the theology that the church is preaching. The theology that you are saved by grace alone, by belief alone, and that works are not required. They're taking verses of Paul totally out of context to make it sound like we are saved by believing and that we don't have to obey and that obedience is not required. But that's not what they taught. That's not 
what scripture says. That word faith is actually the Greek word pistis. We talked about this earlier in this series. That word pistis means fidelity and faithfulness, not just belief. If you have belief, but you are not obeying, you are unfaithful. That word unfaithful is most related to a husband and a wife. It means you're an adulterer. You're an unfaithful bride to the bridegroom. If you don't have obedience, if you are not obeying, you don't have pistis. And so if you are not obeying, you don't have faith, the kind of faith that saves you. They are teaching that this verse means you need to remember the gospel. You need to remember that you're forgiven. And so many preachers are out there preaching this. You got to remember that you're forgiven. You got to just remember that you have forgiveness. That's not what this verse is saying. It's saying the opposite. The context of the verse is this. Earlier in the chapter, John said, do not let anyone deceive you. The one who does what is right is righteous. He went on to say, no one who knows Christ goes on sinning. And those who do go on sinning are children of the devil. He then comes in and says, we know, this is in verse 14, he says, we know we have passed from death to life because we love the brothers and sisters. Whoever does not love is still dead. Then in verse 16, he says, this is how we know what real love is. Jesus laid down his life for us, so we should lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Suppose someone has the world's possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but does not help. Then God's love is not living in that person. My children, we should love people not only in word and tongue, but by showing true love through our actions. By this, we will know that we belong to the truth. And if our hearts condemn us, our hearts can be reassured before him. God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Okay, so I'll pause there and then we'll keep going. But what John just said is, what true love looks like is action. If you see someone in need and you have the means to help and you don't help, then God's love doesn't live in you. He's saying our love should not just be in words and talk. It shouldn't just be feelings in our heart. It should be action. And by this, by what? By loving through action, we know that we belong to the truth. And then if our hearts condemn us, we can have peace with God because he knows everything. He's saying If you are following the way of truth, then if your heart does condemn you, you can have peace with God. You can have reassurance with God because he knows everything. He knows that you are faithful to him. He's not saying that if you're disobeying God and your heart condemns you, you can be reassured before God. He's saying if you are obeying God, you can be reassured before God. And he makes this even clearer if we continue. He says, beloved, If our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him what we ask for because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. This is his command, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we love each other just as he commanded. The people who obey God's commands abide in God, and God abides in them. Okay, so John is saying both before and after this verse that those who are feeling condemned can have reassurance if they're obeying God. If your life is one of faithfulness to God, where you are giving your life to obey God, and when you see people in need, you help then if your heart starts to condemn you, you can have reassurance before God. You can have peace before God. Your heart's lying to you. What he is not saying is if you go through life disobeying God, if you see someone in need and you don't help, well, then you can have reassurance before God because you're forgiven. He's not saying that. That's what the church is preaching today, though. They're preaching that you need to just remember that you have forgiveness 
even when you don't obey, even though you don't obey. And quite frankly, that's not true. Scripture teaches the exact opposite. We looked at a lot of those verses in our last video on legalism, and I really suggest you go and you watch that and you hear those verses. A lot of them are taken from 1 John. Scripture teaches that you do have to obey and that if you obey, then if you feel condemned, you can know you're not guilty. Again, that's not what the church teaches. The church is teaching that if you disobey God and you feel guilty, you need to remember that you're forgiven. If you are going through life disobeying what God wants you to do, and then you're feeling guilty about it, remember you're forgiven. That's not what scripture teaches. Scripture teaches that if you're going through life not obeying God and then you feel guilty about it, you're not forgiven. You feel guilty because part of the job of the Holy Spirit is that he will convict the world of sin. That's what Jesus said. The Holy Spirit comes and convicts people of sin and that makes you feel guilty if you're guilty. So, if you feel condemned because you're not obeying the commands of Jesus, according to what Scripture teaches, it is because you are condemned. And that is really harsh, and most people don't want to hear it. So they turn to teachers who tickle their ears and tell them the things they want to hear. They want to hear, remember that you're forgiven. Remember that you're forgiven. You have to just get it into your head that you're forgiven. No, you have to get it into your head that you have to obey Jesus. You have to get it into your head that you're saved by fidelity to him. You're saved by dying to your old life and living a new life led by the Spirit. And this is the second verse that often is brought up when we talk about condemnation. This is in Romans 8. Romans 8 is so often quoted by people who, quote-unquote, struggle with condemnation. That's the phrase I used to use. I struggle with condemnation. Basically meaning, I feel guilty all the time. Why did I feel guilty? Because my life was not centered around absolute surrender to obeying Jesus. And so the Spirit convicted me. And I felt guilty. And so what did I do? I listened to the false teachers of the modern church. And I went to Romans 8 verse 1. Where it says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But there's a problem with that. First of all, that verse, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, is what it says in most of our English Bibles. But in the original Greek, there is an entire section that has been removed from that verse. In the original Greek, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. It's not there's no condemnation for everyone who calls themselves a Christian. It's not there's no condemnation for those who say they believe in Jesus. It's there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. That's what it says in the Greek. That's what Paul actually said. And if you read Romans 6, 7, and 8 in a row, you can see that that's clearly his message. There's no condemnation for those who are now walking according to the Spirit. Why? Because Galatians 5 says, if you walk according to the Spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So there's no condemnation. But even if you're reading the English version of the Bible that has removed that, it still says, for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that gets back to what the entire book of 1 John is about. True Christians are people who obey. True Christians do not continue to disobey the commands of God. True Christians do not continue to disobey the things that Jesus taught. True Christians live their lives completely for Jesus, obeying him and finding every possible way to obey him. And therefore, there is no condemnation for them. It's not there is no condemnation because you need to remember that even though you keep on sinning, you are forgiven. No. Because the Bible says in 1 John that those who keep on sinning are children of the devil. And that no one 
who goes on sinning is a child of God. No, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not go on sinning, but live for God. They love their brothers and sisters. They love with a true biblical love, which we will get into later in the series. They love with a deep, powerful love that changes their life, changes the way they think about everything. There's no condemnation for those people. But like I said in the last video, John says on judgment day, the books are opened and people are judged by what they did. He says in 1 John 4, that on judgment day, we can have no fear because in this life, we were like Jesus. That's why we have no fear on judgment day, because in this life, we were like him. So if we keep going through life, disobeying the commands of Jesus, and we feel condemned, it is because we are condemned. The majority of people who struggle with condemnation are struggling with condemnation because they are condemned. They're guilty. They love this life. They love this world. They love pleasure. They love comfort. They love the things that this life is offering them too much to obey Jesus. Or they're too busy with the things of this life to obey Jesus. Or they're too distracted by the things of this life to obey Jesus. Or they want something that this world is offering them. Something this life is offering them too much to obey Jesus, or they don't want to let go of their comfort in order to obey Jesus. But they don't want to go to hell. And then they feel condemned because they recognize that they're not doing the things that Jesus said to do. They feel condemned because they are condemned. That's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But then they quench the Spirit. They quench the spirit by telling themselves over and over that they are forgiven. They quench the spirit by reminding themselves of the false gospel that's been preached to them by the modern church. They quench the spirit by telling themselves, I'm saved by faith and not by works. But they don't even understand how that could possibly line up with what James says. You're saved by works and not by faith. They don't even recognize that those two verses, according to their theology, contradict each other. And they keep trying to tell themselves that they're forgiven. They keep trying to tell themselves that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But they're not in Christ Jesus. Because this is what John says. The people who obey God's commands abide in God and God abides in them. John's saying, you're in God if you're obeying God, if you're obeying his commands. John also says this, As for you, be sure you abide in the teaching you heard from the beginning. If you abide in what you heard from the beginning, you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise which he himself promised to us, eternal life. So John's saying, you are in Christ Jesus if you are abiding in what was taught from the beginning. And then he clarifies, in case there's any confusion, he clarifies in 1 John 3.11 what that is. He says, this is the teaching you have heard from the beginning. We must love each other. And then he goes into that verse I read earlier where he says, this is what real love is. It's not a feeling. It's not saying you love someone with your words. It's action. It's if you see someone in need and you have the means to help, you help. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But too many people are going through life thinking that they are in Christ Jesus despite the fact that they don't obey him. And the Bible says so plainly, so clearly, and so many times, you are not in Christ Jesus if you do not obey him. Again, I've brought this up so many times in the series and I'll keep bringing it up. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? He said that on judgment day, many will say, Lord, Lord, and he will say, depart from me, you who practice unrighteousness. 
So many people think that he is their Lord. They think they are in Christ Jesus. They think they are forgiven. And their preachers are telling them to remind themselves of these facts. But they're not facts. They're lies. Because if you don't obey him, you're not forgiven. The first step in accepting Jesus is repentance. Change the way you live. And when God shows you sin in your life, you have to repent. But it's not just turning from sin. Because repentance doesn't just mean stop doing the bad thing. You have to start doing the right thing too. You have to start obeying what Jesus taught. John the Baptist came with a baptism of repentance. Now here's something that the church often doesn't really talk about. Scripture says that John brought a baptism of repentance, that is changing the way you live. It says it's a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He went all over the country around the Jordan River preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Okay, right there, Luke 3, verse 3. John the Baptist was preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. His job was to come to prepare the way of the Lord, to get people to repent, to change the way they're living, so that they would then be ready to follow Jesus. But it's saying that the repentance leads to the forgiveness. So if you don't repent, if you're not changing the way you live, we talked about repentance in an earlier video in the series and what repentance actually means. It means changing how you live. You stop doing the bad thing, you start doing the good thing. If you don't do that, then do you have forgiveness of sins? Then Jesus opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He said to them, it is written that the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations starting at Jerusalem. So scripture teaches so clearly that repentance is required for forgiveness. And repentance means you change your life. It means you change everything. If you don't repent, then you're not in Christ Jesus. If you don't repent, then there is still condemnation. And so all these people who are coming and saying, this makes me feel condemned, this makes me feel condemned. Well, if you're not obeying Jesus, you are still condemned. You're believing a false gospel. You're trying to remind yourself that you have forgiveness when you don't. You're trying to remind yourself that Jesus paid for your sins when you haven't been joined to Jesus. You haven't died to your old life. The church today is preaching a false gospel, telling people that they can continue living in this world and for this world and for themselves as long as they say they believe in Jesus. I heard one person not long ago say that she was frustrated with a family member who wouldn't become a Christian. And she was like, why won't he become a Christian? It's not like it's going to cost him anything. Jesus said the exact opposite. He said, it's going to cost you everything. Unless you die, you can't have life. Being a Christian is not about getting into heaven. Jesus isn't our ticket into heaven. Jesus provided a way for us to be set free from slavery to sin so that we can live a new life. If we don't do that, if we don't have our old lives die and we join ourselves to Jesus to follow him and be faithful to his commands, we don't have that forgiveness and we do still have condemnation. If you feel condemned because you're disobeying Jesus, it's because you're condemned. It's because the Holy Spirit is condemning you pleading with you to repent. But if you keep refusing to repent, you could very well get to judgment day and say, Lord, Lord. And he's just going to say, I never knew you. I never knew you. You practiced unrighteousness. You refused to come to me so that you could have life. Scripture teaches over and over again that true Christians will obey Jesus. Jesus compared it to going from death to life. 
he said a seed has to fall to the ground and die in order to have life. And he's saying that that's the same with us. Unless we give up everything of this life, we can't have life. If we want to have that forgiveness and know we're not condemned, it means we have to start obeying Jesus. And if we're not obeying him, we could tell ourselves that we're forgiven all day long, every day until we die. It doesn't make it true. And just because your favorite preacher tells you to remember that you're forgiven, if you're not obeying Jesus, you're not forgiven. The gospel preached in scripture is not one of say a sinner's prayer and then you'll go to heaven someday. The gospel preached in scripture is you have to change the way you're living. Everything about your life has to die and you have to live entirely for God and his kingdom and doing what God says is right. Everything changes when you follow Jesus. You stop living for this world. You stop living for comfort. You stop living for pleasure. You stop spending your time watching TV and watching the news and caring about the cares and the politics of this world. Everything has to change. And so many people feel condemned because nothing really has changed in their lives. They ignore that needy person and then they feel guilty. They feel condemned. This is exactly what Paul warned us about. Paul said, The time will come when people will not listen to the true teaching, but will find many more teachers who please them by saying the things they want to hear. They will stop listening to the truth and will begin to follow false stories. But you should control yourself at all times. Endure hardships. Do the work of an evangelist and complete all the duties of a servant of God. What Paul is saying here is that he's saying the time will come when people are going to turn away from the truth that they were all preaching. They were preaching the truth that you need to obey Jesus. And he's saying they're going to turn away from this and they're going to find teachers who are going to tell them what they want to hear. What do people want to hear today? They want to hear you're forgiven, you're forgiven, you're forgiven, just remember you're forgiven. You keep sinning, you're forgiven, just remember you're forgiven. You're forgiven by believing, you don't have to obey, you don't have to obey, you're forgiven, just remember you're forgiven. Try to do a few nice things here and there, but remember you're forgiven when you don't. And Paul said, people are going to find teachers who tell them the things that they want to hear. And then he contrasts that immediately afterwards by saying, but you... Do the work of a servant of God. As for you, do the work of a servant of God. Because you should be doing work. Don't be someone who's listening to these preachers who are telling you that you're saved without having to do anything. That you're saved and works are not important. Scripture teaches you need to obey Jesus. From cover to cover, that is what Scripture is teaching. You need to obey the commands of God. And we have been warned by the apostles and by the Lord Jesus himself that false teachers are going to come and they are going to teach us lies that are going to lead people into destruction. And so many Christians are believing these lies they feel condemned because they're not obeying Jesus. And so they find these preachers who tell them, remember you're forgiven. Remember you're forgiven. Remember you're forgiven. Meanwhile, scripture says that if you're not following Jesus, you are not forgiven. You think you're forgiven because you accepted a false gospel. You think you're forgiven because you accepted a gospel that tells you that you are saved by believing in Jesus. But scripture says you're saved by fidelity to Jesus. You're not saved by just believing. That's not what it means in Greek. You're saved by fidelity. You're saved by faithfulness. You're saved by forsaking everything else and following Jesus because you love him. And you obey the commands of Jesus and the commands of God because you love him. And only those who obey love him. If you don't obey, you don't love him. This is taught all throughout the New Testament. 
So to this objection that says, well, this makes me feel condemned. My answer is honestly, if you're not obeying Jesus, you are condemned. Whether you feel condemned or not does not determine what is true. Whether you like the message or not does not determine what is true. If you feel condemned, there's an answer. Repent. Change your life. Change the way you're living. Change everything about what is important to you. Because only one thing is important. But as long as you're not going to repent and change your life to make the kingdom of God the only thing that's actually important to you, you are condemned. That's what scripture teaches. That's what all of the apostles taught. And they warned you not to follow those false teachers who teach otherwise. It's in scripture. You can go read it yourself. Don't follow the people who teach you that you don't have to obey. They are liars. Paul calls them servants of Satan. It's a false gospel. Paul warned us that Christians would believe a false gospel, they would believe in a false Jesus, and they would receive a false spirit. Don't be one of those people. Make sure that what you believe and what you are following lines up with what Scripture actually says. Because what the church is teaching today is a false gospel. It's a gospel of lawlessness. A gospel that says you don't need to obey. It's a gospel that says you're saved by believing. You're saved purely by what Jesus did. And you don't have to do anything. And it's not what scripture teaches. You do have to do something. You do have to obey him. Forsake everything and follow him. You are saved by fidelity to Jesus. And if you feel condemned because you're not obeying him, it's because you are condemned. If you are obeying him, if your life is all about obeying Jesus, centered around him, everything's changed and your perspective is on the kingdom, if your life is one where you are loving the brothers and sisters in action and not just words and feeling, where when you see someone in need, you go and you help because that's what Jesus wants you to do and you love him. And that's what defines your life. It's not just something you do occasionally. That is what defines your life. You build your life around doing that so that you can maximize how often you're able to do that. If that is what defines your life and then your heart condemns you, then you can be reassured before God and you can have peace with God. And you can come before God with confidence. And you receive what you ask for because you obey his commands. That is all 1 John 3. That's what it says. It's not for those who believe. It's for those who obey. For those who follow Jesus and obey him wholeheartedly. They love the Lord their God with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, all their strength. That's not something that just is a feeling. If for you, loving God is just a feeling, then you don't love him with all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. You think you love him, but you don't because scripture says over and over again that those who love him, obey him. And those who obey him are the ones who actually love him. And that if you don't obey him, you don't actually love him. That's what scripture teaches. So if you are condemned because you are guilty, then repent. Change the way you're living. Stop telling yourself you're forgiven when you're not, because that will not end well for you. And if you are living righteously, obeying the commands of Jesus, obeying the commands of God, and your heart condemns you, then you can have peace before God. Go before him with confidence. God knows everything. He knows that you're faithful to him. There might be one other type of person. That would be the person who feels condemned because they don't know the difference between the commands of Jesus and human traditions. Growing up in the church, it's really hard to know the difference between what Jesus actually wants us to be doing and what the church tells us we should be doing because they're usually very different things. So we need to know what does it mean to obey Jesus as opposed to just following human traditions. 
And if we feel guilty because we're not following these human traditions, well, if they're just human traditions, then stop feeling condemned about not doing that. But if it's the commands of Jesus, the commands of God, and you're not doing them, then yes, you should feel condemned. And the answer is so simple. Repent. Change the way you're living. Follow Jesus. Forsake everything and follow him. Give up everything and follow him. In our next video, we're going to talk about what are the commands of Jesus. When scripture tells us we need to be obeying the commands of God and the commands of Jesus, what are those commands? And then we will look at more practically what, does, what do those commands mean in the video after that. And then we will continue on from there. So I hope that even though this is a bit of a harsh video, I hope that it convicts you. If you are someone who has been saying, this leaves me feeling condemned, this leaves me feeling condemned, I hope it convicts you at least enough to go look in scripture for yourself to see if this is true. Stop listening to these preachers who are telling you to just remember you're forgiven. I'm telling you, the Bible says that if you don't obey, you're not forgiven. And they're telling you, the Bible says, that you are forgiven even if you don't obey. Someone is lying. Go find out for yourself what the Bible says. Stop following men. Stop following people who tell you what you want to hear. Because at the end of the day, on that day, on judgment day, what you wanted to hear might not be what you really wanted to hear. What you need is the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. But you don't want to get to judgment day having just believed a lie because it's what was most comfortable. So go find the truth for yourself. Read the book of 1 John. Read Matthew 7. Read the book of Luke. Read the other things that Paul said. Not just you're saved by grace and through faith and not works. Because everyone focuses on that, but Paul said a lot more than that that contradicts that. If you look at what Paul actually taught, he taught a lot of things that people need to be doing. And he says it's all summed up in genuine love. But he's expecting people to do it, and he says to not associate with people who call themselves brothers and sisters, but don't do those things. So then... Paul, are we saved by works or not? Go look into these things for yourself. Because if you find the truth and follow the truth that you get from Scripture and not that you get from men, and if you're willing to give up everything to follow Jesus, if that's what Scripture tells you to do, God will teach you. He will lead you to all truth. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach you everything. So let the Holy Spirit be your teacher and go find out if you're forgiven or not.